Hi, I'm Zach. I'm Allie. I'm John. We formally met each other in 2017. Where we served together as Connecticut SFA state officers. We all shared a burning passion for agriculture. And that's where our friendship began. We traveled the state, inspiring agricultural students to speak for themselves. Showing them how to speak out and advocate for the agricultural industry. Teaching them to vocalize for those who could not. This project is a continuation of our work. Our work to inspire people with the tales of agricultural innovation. To show the world the amazing people of our industry. So that our farmers across Connecticut get the credit that they deserve. This is Complete Connecticut Agriculture. Change is certain, inevitable, and ultimately good. It shows resilience when facing obstacles and uncommon occurrences. Only the most dedicated and innovative among us are ready to face such challenges and come out stronger than ever. Our producers here in Connecticut face challenges every day. Numerous issues with weather, time, and financial strain. Yet no challenge is as great as meeting the constantly changing needs of the consumer. Through critical thinking and determination, our farmers must alter what they do and the services that they provide all the time in order to keep their customers happy and more people knocking on the door. By incorporating various markets under the umbrella of agritourism, our farms and farm families bring us weddings, flower picking, pumpkin mazes, and so much more. With change being the only truth in everyday life, in agriculture. Our producers are doing everything that they can to keep up with the times and prosper. Our farms provide a lot of commodities, events, and products throughout Connecticut, and they contribute to the amazing diversity of our agricultural industry. March Farm has been a Bethlehem gem since 1915 and has brought everything to the hills of the Christmas town. As the agricultural industry changes, so do our farms and March Farm has always been a step ahead of the crowd. In order for us to capture the diversity and ingenuity of Connecticut producers, we had to pay a visit to Munger Lane in Bethlehem. My name is Heather Hurley. I um, was born and raised on our family farm here, March Farms in Bethlehem, Connecticut. We grow um, a multitude of fruits and vegetables. We start things in greenhouses, and everything then is moved outside. Uh, we have a pick your own op operation, as well as um, multiple events that can go on throughout the year. We didn't start as a very diverse operation. Uh, when I was growing up, it was primarily a dairy farm with some apple trees. Well, we got rid of the cows in 87, and we started putting green out with them. 1958, I became a landowner because I was interested in the farm and then I gave, well we had four kids and I gave each one of them an acre and a half. In the early 80s, um, a lot of the dairy farms in Connecticut were going under. We kind of had the orchards to fall back on. Um, and at that point, we started to add greenhouses to the production. That enabled us to have um, vegetables early earlier than people would be growing them in their own gardens. More recently, probably within the last uh, 10 years, it's kind of become a destination where people, um, you know, they come for the day. It gives somebody, it gives families a, um, a nice place to go. We, we get a lot of people coming in from Fairfield County, a lot of people that come in from the city um, that are just not used to a country style uh, or lifestyle. So it gives them an opportunity just to kind of spend a day in the country, um, and it's affordable. You know, if you if I went to bring my family of five to a baseball game, I'm going to drop probably you know hundreds of dollars. Where I can come here and I can pack a picnic lunch and I can pick a few apples and listen to some music, and it's um, way more reasonable. And people are just looking for you know family oriented things to do that are not going to break the bank. When was the farm um, willing to get into events and weddings? What made you guys? Um, my 
brother who passed away last October, um, that was all of his idea. Um, he saw an opportunity, he saw a beautiful setting and beautiful view, and he worked very hard to get it on the map for weddings. Um, and, and he did. So, um, and again, I think it was just another way to make some extra income to ensure that you could get through, you know, winters or get through seasons that crops were a failure or, um, and, and just have it be able to continue going. What is the most rewarding part of having a farm and especially a production farm? Seeing the crops. Like, I love planting corn, planting pumpkins, seeing it grow, being able to take the kids on my little buggy, my go buggy, I call it, and we go out and look at the crops on rides at night, watching them pick the corn, just being able to take a tiny little seed and then take something from that and then put something back in, too. My wife actually got me audible on my phone, so I've been listening to books and farming books, and most of it is, is um, you know, regenerative ag and stuff like that, so it really got my attention. And I listened to a book by Gabe Brown called Dirty Soil, and then the wheels started spinning. And Ideas may be different, and things may be done differently than they were done before, but that's okay. You know, farmers are very much year after year the same thing over and over and over again and it's okay to have uh, different things happening and going about them in different ways.